Hey everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. <coughs> and I guess I'll have Marco introduce what we're doing yeah. right now. So today is actually the start of something that Sophie was looking forward to ever since we reviewed Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. Not really, and but that, Marco looked forward to that it. That is... just putting it on me. No, you looked forward no, to it. I didn't. Allison Mack, April. This is the start. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be pretty scary. I hope that uh, we don't make too many jokes about her sex trafficking cult. Marco knows more about... I don't really know anything about that, but Marco knows a lot about it. So if he wants to make... Uh, jokes about it he can I'll just go ahead and review what we watched <coughs> yeah this is the first thing we reviewed it's something that we've both seen before in fact I still Nine have years ago. I still have my Nightmare Room VHS they made a couple of VHS tapes and it only had a couple of the episodes on it on each one and 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 let's start off with just talking about the Nightmare Room series because I don't really know what the difference is between this and Goosebumps because like it's pretty much the same thing as Goosebumps with just a, the kids are a little bit older yeah. like it's not any more graphic it's not more brutal or the, there's no sex or anything so, like, it, there's not really any difference between this and Goosebumps, except for the kids are a little bit older. So, I, I just, I don't know what the deal is with the Nightmare Room. Yeah, you know, it would have been nice to hear what the purpose of it was. In other yeah. words, what, how did they view it as being different? Or what was their objective in, in doing it? I mean, it's a cool title, The Nightmare Room. It's just that, like, there's no meaning to it. It's like with uh, that, what what was the noob thing called? <laughs> a House of Fear or House of, or what? Oh, I don't know what any of those other... The new Goosebumps thing? <coughs> I have no idea. What's that called? Like It was no good. Okay, all that, if they could have just done Nightmare Room uh, episodes, maybe brushed them up a bit. And they probably would have gotten, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I personally, I would like to just say that I think that this, <coughs> this show is really, really good. I mean, well, it's really, really, really good. Like, this is almost a little bit better than the Goosebumps 1990 show because it takes itself more seriously the the effects aren't as cheesy for the most part i mean i i don't know like i think it's it's slightly better and that do you agree with that Sophie? or what do you well, think well at least in this episode i'm just trying to remember the others but it takes the kids out of the home in other words i think in the goosebumps they're more even though they might not have <coughs> the parents might not have a big part or have a big impact, but the kids are more, it's more focused on them and what they're doing, I think. And I do want to say, too, if you know who Kaylee Cuoco is, or I don't know if that's how you'd say her last name, but I first saw her. She was in this nightmare, not in this one we just watched, but she was in a nightmare room episode about school and a class. She was terrible. She was kind of a bully, and it, it's interesting that uh, she came, she got to be really popular. And, well, there's and, a lot of people on the show that got to be really <laughs> popular. I mean, uh, look at, <coughs> look at Allison Mack, you know, she got to hang out with Superman and then she got arrested for sex trafficking. Well, Kaylee Cuoco, uh, probably has been married a couple times when she had a baby. So she's <coughs> gotten a lot of advertisements and, um, so you really have a thing for Kaylee Cuco or no, whatever. No, I don't. I just, I, I like, just, I don't know, I like, who's that? She was such a bully, and she was a meanie, and then you you see her well, years later, and she kind of 
portrays let's, that part a little bit. Let's get back to the review. Yeah, and so, so let's get back to the review. I think the series overall is very, very good. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was entertaining. I, I don't know why they didn't do more. I think it's a huge shame. You know, they couldn't <coughs> they couldn't bring it back. <coughs> They couldn't bring it back nowadays because it would be different now. You know, they would they would ruin it. They would do what they did with Goosebumps and Fear Street. They just ruin it completely. And it was no good. They make it about like <coughs> diversity and agendas instead of making it about storytelling. And or you still have diversity, in it, but you have to tell a good yeah, story. Yeah, there, there's plenty of diversity in this. I mean, yeah, the, the main does. character in this episode is is a black guy. Uh, and and he's of course the guy from Smallville, who like he har he doesn't do anything anymore, like he doesn't even act anymore at all. And I think it's a shame because I I think he's pretty good. He's a very likable guy, and I think that you know he was actually a good protagonist of the episode, although he was a little babyish, in some way. Like it was kind of funny because. The way that these characters acted, they acted like they were like they should have been twelve year old kids and not eighteen year olds. Because these kids, they're they're supposed to be seniors in high school, right, Sophie? I don't or know. Or what? No, I they in the in the high school episode, and I think there was. Well, let's let's with focus on this school. episode. Let's. Well, they uh they don't seem like seniors in high school. Oh, well, let's focus on this episode. Okay, well, these kids don't seem like seniors in high let's school. Let's look at Alice and Max's birthday. 1982, and this was 2001 or 2002. So she was 20. So that she was definitely supposed to be like a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. And this episode, Camp Nowhere... It's the it's the last episode in the series. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. And it's all about these seniors in high school who are at the summer camp and they have to do this special overnight at this haunted cabin and it's rumored that like campers go missing there and you know maybe there's ghosts or something. Safi. And some other kid tells them that that this one boy used was went to a camp there named I don't know something Murphy or and his parents get a letter or two from him every year and they don't and but they don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, that's a huge plot hole, by the way, and we'll talk about that because I don't know how that letter actually gets to the parents, Safi. I mean, that doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> no, not after what we saw. Especially, yeah, especially when you find <laughs> out the reason why they're there, the reason why there's actually ghost campers. There's no way that the the Nanu Nabakabaki <coughs> tribe would let them send out letters. And if they did, you know what they do? <coughs> the campers would would come together, and they would all send letters to their loved ones, telling them what's going on. Not just one kid. And then their loved ones would come over. And, uh, er, wait a second, but they're getting older and older, too, so that's another... Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that doesn't well, make sense. Well, no, I just mentioned that because they talk about a ghost camp. Yeah. And, and, and that it's... That, well, and that it's... And, and it did... They don't say it's anything that's linked, I don't believe, with these Native American tribe it's just it was built on their land yeah and maybe they weren't happy that's a big was, red flag yeah and the, 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 but then this one kid says and then there's this kid and he sends letters to his parents every year and they don't know where come, they come from or something and so anyway but that's all all that said you know in specifics so <coughs> they go on this overnight and it's already it's right and already there are some weird things that start to happen before they even go. Uh, and, and Russell's bed. Russell is the black guy that we were talking about from Smallville. So we have two people from Smallville in this episode. So that's mm -hmm. another reason why I liked it as a kid. And there's, there's a message that's chiseled on the wall. And it's like chiseled, chiseled. And so there's a, 
there's this really bad uh, writing, these lines where he, he's, he's, Russell says, it looks like someone used a chisel to write the message on the wall. And then a kid is there and he asks him, you mean a chisel? Or you mean like a chisel? And it's like, it, it was so bizarre, like the wording there. It's like, he literally just said that a chisel was used. And, and he's like, you mean a chisel chisel or something? Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> it, it was so strange. And I, I, I guess the point of it was that, you know, how could someone chisel something on the wall? Without any of them waking up. Yeah. This was a full message with multiple words. Uh, and it would be on a wall, and it would make noise. Yeah. And there's no noise. Or at but least nobody woke up. Is there actually an explanation <laughs> to that, Safi? Because no. how would no. the ghosts... But isn't that implying that, like, the ghosts did that in the camp? Maybe? Or, yeah. yeah. But how would that translate to modern day? If, like, they're just stuck in a time loop, how would something that they do in the time loop tr uh, translate to modern day? Unless it was because, done by the Native American group that's watching the property. How, how, well, that's, that's even stupider, because, like, how no, would... No, they don't want anything touched or disturbed. Well, also, how would they know English? You, yeah, that's just all. You can't think about stuff like oh, okay, that. I know, yeah. Because you don't know... But I, I don't think they were implying it was the Native Americans. No, I thought they were implying that it was the ghost campers. Yeah, and it doesn't make any sense, because Safi says... That a kid sends a letter every single year somehow. So, on one hand, this kid is able to send a letter every single year that goes by uh, throughout time. And it's like, it, and it, it progresses. Like, the parents get older and they've gotten a letter every single year. Time passes. But then somehow... They they magically wait until the modern day to chisel a message on the wall conveniently at that time at, at this specific place. It doesn't really make sense, in my opinion. I, 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 I thought it was a prank. Mm. Right? Well, yeah, I thought at first it could be a prank, too, because I couldn't remember how the... It'd been a while since I'd seen the episode, and I, I, was, I couldn't remember exactly what happened. So I thought, yeah, maybe it is a prank. There's also some kind of, is it Jelly Jam, the Camp Jelly Jam of the regular Goosebumps where it was, there was some episode where they went to camp and it was really, they were going to go on another planet. Okay, once. Safi. Well, um, I, that, I, I they, they never made an episode of Camp Jelly Jam. I would just stop all your head. Okay, well, whatever it was, it was a uh, camp episode. Yeah, there are camp. Kids, there are multiple camp stories and in Goosebumps. Go, and they had to be faced with certain yes, uh, uh, challenges to prove that they could last on a on a planet. Yes, Safi. To go into space. I don't know why you're bringing that up. Well, that's the only other. That's all I. And, but I knew this wasn't it. But I just didn't remember how it ended. <sighs> I didn't remember anything being chiseled. Any message, I don't remember about, you know, I don't remember those specifics. A letter being sent to parents from a Anyways, they go on the hike to the cabin, and they have a couple of pranks pulled on them. Like, they put dirt in, in Allison, is it Allison's uh, bottle? I don't know what bottle. any of people's names are. You don't know Allison Mack? I don't know what their, their But uh, was she the one holding the bottle with the dirt in it? Yeah. I think so. Oh, then it's hers. Wow, that was really hard to answer. I just don't and know so, character names. Well, that's irrelevant at this point. I, I was not saying her character's name anyway. Well, she had dirt put in her bottle, and I thought, you know what? Yeah. Props to them for doing that. You know, she deserves dirt in her bottle. <laughs> right? I guess so. I mean, she didn't... I mean, that's what's really fucked up, is that when she was in prison... They didn't make her eat dirt or make her drink dirt. It took the teenagers in a, a Nightmare Room episode to make her eat dirt. <laughs> so that's pretty sad. You know, the prison system has really failed to punish the criminals at this point. It, because, like, I... I and, and, they, and they posted what she had for Christmas dinner. And I thought, wow, she got a lot of food to eat. 
and like I bet that there's poor people who didn't even get to eat what she got to eat on Maybe. Christmas. Maybe. That's pretty bizarre. You know, they should have just given her dirt and said, yeah, you can pretend like it's a Christmas dinner, you know, if you put some water in it and make some shapes, you know, make <laughs> You can make a dirt project for Christmas, and then you can eat that, you stupid bitch. <laughs> and so they <coughs> find that. that. Well, why not? They they wow. they find the haunted cabin. It's and just a cabin. There's nothing magical or haunted or supernatural, anything about it. It's just a no, cabin. No, it it looks like something out of <coughs> Fear Factor a little bit. It looks like something where the contestants would have to go in there and eat maggots or something. I don't know, but like. I, I don't know, ugh. It's a very gross cabin. They haven't done anything to, like, make it look nice. And then they keep on playing pranks on them. Like, they, the, the main guy who's in charge of everything, he pretends like he went missing and he screams in the woods and, you know, they paint a message on the wall and all this stupid shit and, and they figure it out. And then what happens that makes it so that they go back in time or they get inside of the limbo time loop <coughs> land Safi. i don't know exactly it just i don't either it just kind of happens overnight yeah. i think when they wake up the next morning it's weird how they're the only camp that this has happened to or they're i mean they're the only group that this has happened to like they've done this overnight ever since the 50s or 60s and somehow this is the only group of people who got put into this time loop. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Is that like why why did this group specifically get put in that loop? I don't know. Maybe it's answered in the book. <laughs> if someone's read the book, that would be a great question to ask. I could probably get the book and read it. Well maybe we should review the Nightmare Room books <laughs> and the episodes. Since you never can figure out any books to read, you're like, oh yeah, you, you guys know what's really hilarious? Safi thought we were going to read these little children's books, and they were like five minutes long, no. and they were like picture books, and she was <laughs> like, ooh, these look really good. No. And, and then you and then you actually read one, and you're like, oh, that's not, we're not going to read that. And I was like, yeah, I know, Safi. Okay, Mark. What was up with that? I don't know, but let's just focus on this. You can't even particular. find a book. I, I read books, still read books all the time. I'm, I'm reading a mystery episode about Key West, a, a mystery series. Yeah, you like, you like, West, yeah, Florida. you, you like to read about Florida, but you won't go there. <laughs> uh, anyways, for some reason, they get transported back in time, and is oh yeah. Before we should talk about that, Allison Mack. When she finds out what they did to her, them and when they pulled the pranks on them, she says, I can't believe that he would actually do that to us. And I was like, you know, that's really ironic coming from <laughs> Allison Mack. You know, I bet that a lot of her victims, like when they, when they were uh, caught, where they, when they were in therapy, all those sessions, you know, I bet they were like, I can't believe that the girl from Smallville would actually do that to us. <coughs> and it was the way that she said it, too. I mean, it, 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 am I saying it like exactly how she said it? Like, she's like, yeah, kind of, yeah. I can't believe they would actually do that to us. And I was like, yeah, speak for yourself, uh, blonde. They should make like a remake of Legally Blonde starring Allison Mack and it would be all about how like I don't know. No, it wouldn't be the same and it wouldn't work. It would be a real it you would be R rated. You can't beat the Legally Blonde movie. That was like that special Reese Witherspoon, although I don't care for her very much. She really I don't she like was her perfect perfect in that movie. I don't like her at all, I actually. Movie. Like, I don't I, like any of the other movies after something that ha movie was good. Something happened with her. Like, either she, she became a bitch or she was always a bitch. I don't know. And That's it just weird. didn't show on, on camera. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It's but, like, weird. something happened to her. Well, I and think she just got uh, full of herself. She's blonde. No, I think she just got full <laughs> of herself because she... 
you know, was successful. And she'd been acting for a long time, since she was a kid. And now she has a daughter who looks like exactly like her. And a son. So well, I hope her kids grow up to be decent people and like her. Yeah, I Anyways, that when, when they first wake up in the uh, haunted cabin... They 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 they, they, they don't come know up. What happened? Well, no. They don't well, know what's going on? They don't know that they're. I don't think they're no. They don't know that they're in a different time. Well, at first they come up with a really <laughs> stupid idea that I just wanted to highlight. Russell says, like, you know, I was just thinking, if we if we keep the secret that we're not really being haunted and we're just being pranked, then they'll give us whatever we want. And I was like, what the hell? I'm going to say that. Like, where, they, where would he get that idea? Number right? one, that's something a 12-year-old would say. That's not something an 18-year-old man would say. No, I don't think so either. And number two, like, what would they give them? Like, more beans? Like, do they want an extra can of beans for their <laughs> uh, supper? Like, what, what are they talking about? They'll give them whatever they want. And what would they want? <laughs> That's really weird. Well, we know what Allison Mack would want. She would want a lot of people to uh, join her cult. I don't know. I don't know. That that, that didn't that didn't make sense. But, yeah. Yeah. I. But and then they find out because they go outside. I mean, you don't know. I mean, there's nothing different. No. It's not like the, the you know the lighting is different. Like it's green or blue or red or something. It's just regular it looked like a nut at morning time next day but this kid comes up and uh, he's acting weird and he says you got to get away and then all of a sudden all these other kids come up and <coughs> they surround them and then the, the counselor the main guy I guess the head of the camp he comes and they're wearing different clothes they're they're wearing camp outfits, meaning t-shirts and shorts, but it's a like a beige, like a, almost colorless clothing, and uh, like Friday the Thirteenth type of clothes. It, it's weird, and then uh, the story kind of get it just kind of gets dragged out. Oh, uh, that's bullshit. Well, no, I think it does. It no, may, there may be like a it, they. They, well, at first, what, 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 what part of this episode did they need to cut out, Safi? What no, part? I said dragged out. Yeah, so that means Maybe that it just, that means it's it's slow, and you, they needed to make some editing. They needed to no, cut stuff out. I, well, I don't mean that. Maybe I'm just saying it wrong. It just seems like it comes out. Maybe it comes out in spurts. And so you really don't. And they're like, who are all these people? And they say, oh, you know, there's multiple camps in the area. You all are like two miles or three miles west of here or something like that. And, and they're like, oh, okay. And uh, we'll call your camp, uh, you know, the, the head of your camp and tell them you'll be, you'll be, you're here and you're on your way back. You must have gotten lost or something. And they say, okay. And they take his word for it. But then uh, this kid draws him aside, and he's this kid I'm telling you about, and he said they're lying. Is that the annoying one? He looked familiar. Well, we'll get we'll get to that. But I also want to mention because uh, we're not supposed to be completely re recapping the entire episode I know, I'm like just to say like it. you like to do. I... The ghost campers or no wait no I'm not going to get there yet. But at first they also find a spirit doll that was left there. <laughs> by the ghost campers, and, and uh, they just leave it in the middle of the forest, and it was never found over time, I guess, because that also is weird, because that ghost, that spirit doll, if the letters and the and the message on the wall translated to, to the current time, then that spirit doll also would have been in the current time. They would have found it when they were searching for them back, back in the 60s. But I just wanted to say, I have to demonstrate it. Safi's going to have to take a video after we're done. Because when the girl finds out that the spirit doll was probably left there by another camper, the way that she dropped it was, like, really funny. Because she dropped it kind of like she's like, eh. Like she was like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. 
she was like this, right, Safi? She was like, eh. <laughs> right, right Safi? I don't know. I guess she just did that because it was dirty. She was like, eh. <laughs> I'm not going to have any fun with that. And I thought that was really hilarious. Yeah, that was... That was that some bad acting. That, that whole thing with that doll, I... I don't think it meant much. It didn't mean much to me at all. It didn't have any, I just wish they would have left it out. Yeah. Because I'm thinking <laughs> now... They... Well, we without going in the whole thing, just... They, it, they had it at the end. Right? Remember? They no, but that that's a different end. one, though. Remember, each each group is given a spirit doll when they go on the hike, and they bring it back. But wouldn't that be the same one? So I guess they just they made they made another one after that group went missing, and somehow they never found they never found the old one. I don't know. They didn't say that. It's not clear. It doesn't matter. I it, well, it does, but it doesn't. It's just like. It's just it's one of those details that kind of like, like, like what I said, it just kind of floats around. And, yeah. And you, it's kind of like a balloon that's been let go and floating around in the atmosphere. And you're, you're trying, to, and it has a string and you're trying to grab onto it, but it just kind of floats by. And then you might grab onto it and pull it down. And have it for pull a the string! And then it gets loose and goes away again. I don't know, it's just. Remember that, Safi? That's oh. why I, I, I said, I just, uh, some of the facts. Are Pull just, the string. They're just, uh, I don't know, they're, it's not, it's just not all laid out. It comes out in spurts. Yeah, then they're talking to the kids at this ghost camp, and, and what I thought a big plot hole was the fact that they're supposed to all be keeping a secret that this is a ghost camp. They don't want to freak out these kids, which, by the way, why? I didn't know what they were expecting because I guess they thought that those kids were going to be trapped there with them. And so I don't know, like, what, what lying to them would do. Like, when were they going to tell them? <laughs> like, that'd be pretty scary. And it's like they can't even give them the common courtesy of telling them. But, like, they're keeping a secret, supposedly. But then when they're all talking to the individual campers, all of them are, are, are like, role-playing that it's the 60s. Talking about like old basketball players. The president went Lyndon when Lyndon Johnson was president. Yeah, and it's like they're not doing a <coughs> they're not doing a good job at keeping the secret. No, and these kids are like, what the hell? They're saying all these weird things about about if people and events that happened a long time ago. Yeah. And they don't understand. And then the ghost com campers realize that they kind of gave themselves away. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't understand. I'm, not, I'm thinking about what they're all wearing the same kind of clothing, except for yeah. that little boy. Yeah. <coughs> who, um, he I draws guess, them into the forest and says, you can't believe anything they say. Yeah, I guess He's it's... not wearing what they're wearing. I, I think it's because he doesn't like <coughs> camp. He mentions that his parents forced him to go there, so he. Yeah. I guess he just doesn't want to wear the uniform. Um, that uh, be. But I, I gotta say, I, I think that being trapped in this camp sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, I guess not for all the years that they got trapped there, but, uh, and, and they only, they're only trapped there for like a couple of, a couple of weeks or something out of a year, and for the rest of the year, they're just in limbo land or something. Yeah. But I think, like, if they're in limbo land, it would be pretty fun to take a break and just get to go to camp, uh, eat hot dogs, <coughs> do a lot of other stuff, fun camp stuff. You know, I didn't. Th I didn't, I thought like this isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, it it, it kind of reminds me of the new Goosebump series, like with that thing where they thought they were going to be trapped in the house with Justin Long. And I think maybe this is where they were taking that from. Oh. What do you think, Safi? I don't know. I didn't think about that at all. Okay. I think the Indian group is Onondaga. Not a dog. Onondaga. What the hell? I they didn't. They said it was Nanunaku or something. I, I don't know. I'll have to read the book. Nanunaki. <coughs> I'll have to read it. I really liked uh, the second half of this episode 
because I felt like the first half was more reminiscent of a Welcome to Camp Nightmare in the sense that it was all fake and no nothing was really happening, but I liked the second half because it was very ominous feeling. Well, I think the first half just sets it up, although you yeah. don't know really what you're being set up for. Yeah. You're just you're giving kind of a sketch, like I said. I really like the head of the camp, Uncle Al, uh, you know, he, he is so much scarier and more menacing than the uh, the head of the camp in the Welcome to Camp Nightmare in that episode. You know, he plays a, a, a good quote-unquote villain, but he's kind of like a trick villain because he's really not the villain at all. I mean, he doesn't have any choice no. over whether... He got trapped, too. Yeah, they're all trapped. <coughs> and this fucking Drew kid, he's the worst. Like, he comes on screen, he's like... You guys, I gotta trust Uncle Al. You guys gotta get out of here right now. <coughs> and that's how he talks. And he's just like a fucking retard. He's just so stupid and dumb. It's like, after all these years of being trapped at the camp, the way he acts is like, this This guy's like an idiot. Like, they, they need to get this guy and offer him to the to Indians and say, like, if we let you, like, torture his soul, will you let us leave? Like, because <laughs> this, this guy's an idiot. Well, and, he just doesn't want to be there. Yeah, but who cares? <coughs> He's been there for 30 years. I mean, what's the worst that's happened for him? I mean, did he fall in love with someone and she <coughs> broke his heart? Like, I just, I can't see it. Did he get a splinter? Did he run into a spider in the, a cabin or something? Like... What's what's the worst that's happened to him in all these years of being at this camp? What's the worst that could have happened? I don't know. He couldn't go home. Yeah. None of them could go home. None of them could though. I mean, he's <coughs> he's not the special one. I mean, he kind of looks like Harry Potter but stupid. You know, <laughs> like Harry Potter. Like if Harry Potter was like a, you know, the great value version, right? Yes. And he does something really dumb shit after the truth is revealed. <laughs> the truth doesn't make any sense either, by the way. The truth is that the, the, the camp was built on sacred land uh, that belonged <coughs> to this Native American group. And they were mad. And they took it out on these campers and they put a spell on them. And after... Two weeks of having camp, they would disappear <coughs> every year, and they wouldn't be able to go back. They were all trapped. And so that little boy that Mark was talking about, he was all upset, and, and he, start, he had an axe, and he started to chop at a tree. Yeah, and I think, like, that was another <coughs> thing that I was like, this kid is so dumb. Like, what's that going to accomplish? Like, make I them know. pissed off and make it so that they get less camp that year? Because, like, the, the, they want to punish these people forever for some reason. These kids did nothing wrong. They didn't uh, go to camp. They just attended it. Yeah, and I think that that's a big plot hole because these idiot uh, Nanunaki tribe people, these, the, these spirits, they have accomplished nothing. By trapping these this camp of kids. Right, Safi? Yeah. They've accomplished nothing. The camp still goes on. In fact, they make fun of them. And they, they have this little game that they play with the haunted cabin every year. They have accomplished nothing by doing what they did. Like that That's what's so hilarious. It's like, what did that do by just trapping these innocent children... And then the poor adults and the teenagers who volunteered to work at this camp. Like, what did that do? I know. <laughs> like, it's so, stupid. So, you know what happens. Yeah, I mean, we don't even, we shouldn't even have to say. But if somebody's chopping at a tree and they were already mad about the land being destroyed or disrupted due to building this camp on top of it they're going to be mad so one of the so he starts chopping everybody's having a fit because these new campers who are from today and want to go back 
they're like, what the hell? Yeah. They're going to get trapped, too. And, and okay. Russell tackles them. He... He, yeah, he goes took his damn he, away from him. he goes smallville on him and tackles him and i thought this is the best moment of the episode because like i thought good for russell now this is a goosebumps type of protagonist that i'd like to see like someone with balls you know instead of all these like slappy world books where the kids are like no and they they won't do anything, you know. They're just so afraid of everything, and they There's can't. A particular line about the Ugh. no, <laughs> and 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 uh, compare that with Russell, who's like, oh, you want to you want to chop down that Native American tree? Chop down you. And then what happens? The little boy disappears. Yeah, he gets fucked up. I mean, nobody else does, but the whole. I guess the whole place starts disappearing. Yeah. And then the new people from today, they run as fast as they can go. And they go in back into that cabin. I don't I didn't get that. I don't I know. I thought they'd run back to their original camp. But they go back to their cabin that they had slept in that night. And they barricade the door, but Russell gets left behind. Yeah, he he has the classic classic cliché where you, you get caught in a vine, and you trip and fall, and the vine is, like, pulling you, and you're like, no! And you see this darkness starting to cover his leg. Yeah, right? ki kind of like in Stay Out of the Basement, where the uh, the, the plant uh, attacks the little boy when he's uh, looking into the basement window. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, but then you hear this... You saved the tree or something. I don't know. What you this. tried to protect our land. <laughs> and in exchange for that, we will let you and your friends go. And it's like, yeah, that's that's stupid. Like, why were they even trapped there in the first place? Like, it's, just, it's so like... I know if they do this every year, how come they got trapped? Yeah. So there's just a lot of little... That's why I said it came out... The story was coming out in spurts. Yeah. Little spurts here and there. It's like somebody had a squirt gun, and the story was in the squirt gun, and every squirt was part of the story. Yeah. So, um... I was still... I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I liked it I, anyway. I give it an A+. Plus. I well, thought... you never know that by listening to us, but... Well, it's, it's just that... It's pretty good. If we just said that we liked the episode <laughs> and that everything was good, then there wouldn't be anything to talk about. And honestly, these things are, they're not necessarily criticisms, they're just questions. And they're just like little like discussion points of like, oh, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. Uh, Let's see if I can read it. Maybe they could improve it with the <laughs> sequel, you know, or maybe they could make it make sense by like just explaining it, you know, like if it just, if Arl Stein ha happened to listen to the video, which would never happen, uh, then he'd be able to answer the questions of like, why that, why that, like, you know. It would be interesting to talk to him. Because when, when my other son and I went to see him years ago, and he had written a book of short stories, and uh, I bought it, and I wanted him to sign it, and I wanted to tell him how his Goosebumps books had encouraged people in the first grade to learn how to read, and that my son had already learned how to yeah, read. Yeah, you, you've already told that story that. ten anyway, times. I, he could, he, they prevented him from talking to us. I mean, he really oh. couldn't say much. And I really would like to... You, wouldn't it be interesting to ask him about why he does or doesn't do certain things? No, because <coughs> you better believe, after I've read all these books, that he would be getting roasted for two hours long. Well, Marco, Marco did something too. He took that master class. You know, they, a lot of these uh, writers and uh, actors and other people, they have what you call a master class. And you pay money and <coughs> you get several sessions. And it's kind of like a, you learn new things, but it's it's kind of like a, an in person. So, what uh, would you rate this biography. episode, Safi? Oh, how how would you do it? By I early? gave it. I said I gave I, it an A plus. I give it an A too. Because I I mean I still think <laughs> it's a very good episode despite the things that don't make sense. 
Yeah, it's very I, entertaining. And if you compare it to some of the modern stuff... It's a million times better. It is so much better. And uh, that's why I say, if they could do that, <coughs> why did they stop? Yeah. And why... Why couldn't they repeat that later? Well, I don't know. I mean, The Haunting Hour might be good. The Haunting Hour series, which was also an Arl Stein show. But I never... Did you ever see any of those? I saw one episode, and it was, it was very good, actually, but I haven't seen anything else. And I was thinking that'd be a show we could review. <coughs> well, I, I saw some of these other Night Room, Nightmare Room episodes, and I liked them. Oh, yeah, they're, they're all really good. I thought they were all good. I never have any, um, I thought they were entertaining and fun and scary and, uh... <clears throat> I think, too, the fact that the show was really ahead of its time because, you know, this was before we knew about all the stuff that happened with Allison. And I think it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because, you know, you think about... I bet that a lot of these girls, they refer to the rooms that, in this cult, they refu they refer to those rooms as the nightmare rooms, right? Right, Safi? Like, uh oh, we got to go in the nightmare room with <laughs> Alice and Mac, and then the theme song would start to play, and Earl Stein would come on, and he's like, "I'm Earl Stein," and uh, what what else does he say? Like. Uh, anything can happen in the nightmare room and it's like yeah I bet anything can happen like that's fucked up shit that happens in the nightmare room with Alice and Mac hey Marco uh, he knows more all about this I don't know anything Late, only people I know about is that Ruby Frankie and jo Jody or whatever yeah you're, you're obsessed with that oh, I don't, let's not get into a tangent about that <laughs> well, there are a million tangents. They were famous actresses, but they were on YouTube. Oh, well. The famous YouTube. Nobody gives a shit about YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous that's, if you say that. That's why it's taken a long time to get 500 subscribers. <laughs> they had millions. <laughs> and they're abusing their children. Well, I, I, I guess it's just it's just slightly... It, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to compare crimes, but like... So anyways, that's our review for The Nightmare Room. This is just the first installment in uh, Alice and Mac April. We will be eating mac and cheese. <laughs> oh boy. <I> to <laughs> celebrate. Yeah, we got to home make some mac and cheese or to celebrate. Cheese. To celebrate this, this true talent in Hollywood that... You know, probably probably will never act again unless it's in a snuff film video or something. <laughs> She'll be. Well, is she still in prison or not? How many years did she get? She got seven. I think she got like seven years, but then she got let out after three. Oh, she is out. Or, or two years or um... something. Yeah, she's out. She's running wild. She'll probably come and get me, and uh, put dirt in my bottle. <laughs> right. That'd be pretty funny. Whatever. Maybe she... It would be interesting <laughs> to see how long these two ladies are in jail. Prison. Because they're in Utah. Maybe if that woman we're talking about would have been in Utah, it would have been a lot longer. I don't know. I don't know. It's a very weird uh, system. Anyway, Safi? Okay, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers. We welcome you to our channel, and goodbye, everybody. Bye!